Is anyone else shocked at how season 2 of Singles Inferno ended? I mean, other than that one couple that has been painfully obvious from the start, I could not predict the rest at all. What the hell happened? Let's look at Sulki first. Sulki is kind of like this year's Gia, only much more subtle and understated. She has that same cute slash sexy vibes that Gia had, she has very Korean features, and if you pay attention to her background and the brands that she wears on the show, it's clear that she's loaded. I mean, not everyone can have the privilege of majoring in piano, and let's not forget that her dad is one of the most famous plastic surgeons in the country. When I first saw Sulki, I thought she was kind of annoying honestly. She looks and talks like a mean girl, but she doesn't have as much charisma as Jia did to pull it off. And do I even have to mention her date with Dongwoo? That shit was so boring that I would have rather watched paint dry. But after watching her with Jean Young, on that date in paradise, it was like the first time that we could actually see her being nervous around someone. And ever since she and Jean Young got back from paradise, they were giving American high school couple vibes, like the jock and the head cheerleader. And honestly, that's the kind of chemistry I never thought I'd see from two people on a reality dating show where they've only known each other for like, three days. Her reaction towards Zhang Wu was also completely unexpected. At first I thought she was just playing him or using him to make Jin Young jealous, but she really opened up to him on their paradise date and she seemed more comfortable with him than she did with anyone else. In contrast she pretty quickly shut down Dong Wu's advances. So, yeah, Sul Ki gets points purely for being way more unpredictable and sincere than I thought she'd be. Next, Sei Jong. Oh my god, this girl. From the moment I saw her, I thought she was so pretty and charming, and she's definitely gonna get all the guys. I mean, she looks so fit, like she does a lot of outdoor sports, she's outgoing, she has a great smile. She's basically this year's Ya Won. Unfortunately, just like Ya Won, my girl did not get to go to paradise at all. Even the new guy Sei Jun said Si Jong attracted him the most at first, but then he had to pull a Hyun Sung and pick So Yi instead. I almost screamed. I do have to say, though, in the recent episodes, some of the comments she made especially to Sulki were a little, sus. It's like she was trying to add fuel to the fire, but who knows. And it's kind of weird that she's had so many one-on-one -on -one conversations with all the guys, but none of them have aired. Either she had no chemistry with any of them or the producers purposely chose not to air those scenes, because they wanted to push certain love lines. Well, whatever the case, I'm rooting for her modeling career. You know what, I'm going to get my OG fave out of the way next. Kim Hanbin is pretty much the most K-drama looking contestant to enter the show, and you can't convince me otherwise. He's good looking, he has a great smile, and he cooks, professionally. I thought he'd get picked by one girl at least, if not a lot more, so imagine my shock when none of the girls seemed attracted to him. And the one time so -un picked him, it was because she couldn't pick Yoon Jae. It's also kind of funny because in some of the other dating shows on YouTube that Hanbin has been in, he's usually really popular with the ladies. Of course, the ladies in question were way younger. I want to say that maybe he has a youthful charm, but all the contestants make fun of him for acting older and almost like a host, so I really don't know. Unlike certain people cough cough, he picked up that so -un wasn't really attracted to him pretty early on and gave her her space from then on. He was also straightforward with Soe about how Yoon Jae feels and was a really great friend to her on their next paradise date. Plus he's always making jokes that are like, dad jokes, but I can't deny that they're funny. So, I mean, face, check, personality, check, sense of humor, check. And did I mention he cooks? I don't want to be biased, but like, this guy, for me, is still 10 out of 10. Based on just first impressions alone, though, I think Young Jae would have been the most popular. He's handsome, he's well-built, and he looks like a dependable guy. He has a nice smile too. Total boyfriend material. I think he was really friendly with everyone too, helping them out and giving them compliments. But so -un must have put some kind of spell on him on the first paradise date, because ever since he came back from that, it's like he had tunnel vision. This might be an unpopular opinion, but the way he treated Soe really ticked me off. I mean, no one's complaining about him not liking her back, but at least have the decency to tell that to her face? But instead, he spent more than two episodes dragging out the whole thing, leading her on with half-hearted words when it was already clear that he was head over heels for so -un. Maybe he's not used to rejecting people, but still, it was painful to watch him retreat into his shell every time Soe came within a six feet distance. To me, that spells emotionally immature. I personally would not approach someone who acts that way around me, but to be fair to Soe, Young Jae was sending a lot of mixed signals, especially in the first few episodes. To look at it from another perspective, I think a lot of girls would love to have a boyfriend like this, someone who doesn't have eyes for anyone else and shuts down any girl who tries to make a move on him. I mean, even the words he said to Soe at the beach during the finale seemed very forced and insincere, and there was such a huge distance between them. 
but I mean, come on, they all came here to participate in a dating game. It's not that deep, and Young Jae could have been a better sport about it. Coming to Seo Yin, from the moment she entered, she brought this godly aura with her, enough to make guys want to give her a standing ovation. During the first episode, the way she talked to people and carried herself made her look like, a princess? Like someone who's regal and diplomatic. She certainly knows how to make a positive impression on anyone, even if she doesn't say a single word to them. Then, watching her conversation with Young Jae, it was so easy to see why he fell for her almost immediately. I did not expect the two of them to talk to each other, let alone say so much while saying so little, if that makes sense. But the matching outfits, the way they gave hints to each other, everything was so perfect. It was to the point where finding out that she was an artist actually came as a shock to me, because artists are usually more emotional and less wise, to use Young Jae's words. But the fact that she was crowned Miss Korea in 2021? Yeah, that's right on the money. Even during her conversation with Zoe, she gave great advice and exuded confidence the whole time. Like, this is someone who is really sure of themselves. She's nice to everyone, but exactly to the point that it's necessary. She doesn't overdo anything. If I had to point out a flaw about Soeun, I'd say, she's kinda boring. I love her, but I usually fast forward through scenes of her dates. She and Young Jae look great together, like a couple who have been married for years with a child on the way, which, hey, is great for them, but it's not exactly what I tune into the show for. Moving on to Soe, where do I even start? Honestly at the beginning, I just felt bad for her. I really think the producers did her dirty by bringing her onto a show where all the contestants look like models or idols. It's not that Soe is not attractive, but she has a very next-door girl vibe. I think she would have been perfect as a contestant on Terrace House, for example. But Singles Inferno is notorious for having contestants that look like they stepped out of a magazine. But it did make me curious to see what she would do, which I guess was kind of the point. From the beginning, she latched herself onto Youngjae and popped up everywhere he went, always wanting to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him. The first few times it was kinda cute to watch, and I was like you go, girl, for having the confidence to pursue him so directly. But after a point it got too much. Even though Young Jae never openly communicated that he wasn't interested in her, it was pretty obvious by how uncomfortable he was acting around her, and she should have backed off. So around episode 4 or 5, I was definitely starting to find her annoying and even overbearing. Her date with Sejun was cute, but it was not at all satisfying to watch since she was obviously still hung up on Young Jae. For me, the turning point with Soe came when it was her turn to pick someone to take to paradise, and she shocked everyone by picking Han Bin. I think it was a great choice on her part to just bring a good friend instead of choosing between the guy she likes and the guy who likes her. And also at that point, it seemed like she could really use some time off to just chill and get her thoughts in order. After getting back from that paradise date, she kept a distance from Young Jae and just hung out with everyone else happily. She even had some sweet moments with Sejun. So, yeah, by the end of the season, Soe definitely grew on me, which I didn't expect at all. Speaking of unexpected character developments, let's talk about Dong Wu. Appearance-wise, Dongwoo definitely had a huge advantage this season. He looked older, mature, and more masculine than the rest of the male contestants. He also seemed easygoing with a good sense of humor, like when he joked around with Sulki while going to fetch water. And let's not forget how sweet he was while taking care of Nadin and looking out for her. I think his first red flag popped up even before he went to paradise though, when he had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Nadin and basically told her that he wanted to go to paradise with her. Look, I can appreciate some drama, but to have that conversation with Nadin and then pick someone else just makes no sense to me. Also, I get that he was really attracted to Sulki, but to keep asking her questions about how she felt about their relationship when there wasn't even a relationship to begin with was just crazy, especially after she clearly tells him that she doesn't like talking about that kind of stuff. And I know she's 25 years old so the age gap between them isn't that big, but why is he, as a 32-year-old man with a career, trying to pursue a university student? He did end up choosing Nadin for the next paradise date, but I think it was only because he wasn't allowed to pick Sulki again. And either way, the whole thing rubbed me the wrong way, because he seemed so nonchalant about Nadin on the date, and after coming back to Inferno, his eyes were on Sulki again. The worst part was that even after Sulki took the time to explain her side of things and gave him a proper rejection, he still chose to go after her as if the rejection never happened. Considering he's a doctor, I did not expect him to have the EQ of a fly, but I guess you can never judge someone by their profession alone. Next, Jong Woo. Jong Woo looks like he's from a K-pop group, but the fact that he's a barista with his own cafe only makes him more attractive. But talking about first impressions alone, honestly, I didn't have much of an impression of him at all. He was just kind of in the background for me. 
Of course, like the judges kept mentioning, he had this strangely awkward charm which will definitely be a great thing in real life, but kind of off-putting on a dating show. I have to say though, out of all the contestants who just blindly pursued one person, Zhang Wu is the best. I mean, instead of just telling Sul Ki that he likes her again and again and putting pressure on her, Zhang Wu actually put in the effort to do things for Sul Ki, like giving her medicines when she wasn't feeling well, and giving her a book to read. This is so different from Dong Wu, who basically acted like he was owed Sul Ki's affection without giving anything in return. And come on, it's crazy that he actually won a competition for Sul Ki and took her to paradise just like he promised her he would. Of course, I feel like he already had the best date with her on Inferno the night before, when they were just chatting with each other and taking Polaroid pictures. If I had to choose a drawback, I'd say it's the way he's always on the verge of tears when talking about his feelings for Sul Ki. Again, there's no reason to get so emotional over someone you've literally only known for a few days. But anyway, it didn't seem to bother Sul Ki so much, seeing he's the one she chose to leave the show with. For someone entering the show so late, Min Su seemed like a bad choice. She's pretty and all, but there was nothing about her that would immediately draw someone in. Considering her personality, I legit thought she would choose Young Jae, but for some reason she chose Jin Young, not once, but twice in a row. I'll admit, their first paradise date wasn't so bad. I can't say they had chemistry, but they were able to have a good conversation and they both looked like they had fun. But the next day, the way Min Su interrupted Jin Young and Na Din while they were talking to each other was just wild. I get that she came on really late and she didn't have much time, but she could have spent time talking to the other male contestants or waited for her turn at least. Jin Young makes it very clear to her right there and then that he wants to spend his remaining time on the show getting to know other people, so imagine the audacity she must have had to go ahead and drag him to paradise with her again. On that paradise date, she receives pretty much the clearest rejection that anyone has on this show, but she's still stubborn on talking to Jin Young again before the finale as if she actually has a chance with him. So he might have given me secondhand embarrassment, but Min Su just got on my nerves. Nadin was obviously put in the show to grab the attention of international viewers, and I hate to say it but it worked. The way she talks and behaves is really so relatable, and she reminds me of some of my friends, even. What isn't relatable is that the girl literally does pre-med at Harvard, and is also really athletic. I mean, talk about being accomplished. Unfortunately, I don't think she was really attracted to any of the guys on the show and vice versa, but I kind of expected that right from the start. I think her personality would have shined more around someone that she actually liked, but what can you do? Even her paradise date with Jin Young just seemed like two friends hanging out. She could have just mentally checked out like Sei Jong did, but since she had a goal of wanting to learn how to put herself out there, I think she did a great job. Even though there was so much competition for spending time with Jin Young, she didn't back down, but she didn't step on anyone's toes like Min Su did either. Then we have Sei Jun. The first time I saw Sei Jun walk down those stairs, I thought, wow, could they have chosen a more boring contestant? He looks great, but he had zero charisma, and seemed like a bad choice to bring in especially this late into the game. The way he was dressed and carried himself also made it seem like he was a little high-strung, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but I just couldn't see him gelling with the rest of the contestants. But boy was I wrong. If there was a relatability award for this show, Sei Jun would win. The way he spent most of his time in Inferno just sleeping, the way he voluntarily gave up during the competition just because he couldn't be bothered, and even the way he reacted when he found out that Na Din went to Harvard, it was all stuff that I could see myself doing, and I'm sure most of you could too. And he's not like Han Bin, who intentionally cracks jokes to lighten the mood. Instead, he lightens the mood just by being himself, which is such a rare quality to have. On a dating show, it's very rare for a contestant to stand out for their own personality alone, but I think Sei Jun managed to do that. But the way he chose to pursue So E was really the icing on the cake for me. He completely understood where she was coming from every step of the way, and he didn't put pressure on her at all. Even when she didn't choose him for the next paradise date, he took the initiative to talk to her first and ease her mind about it. To take the weight off people that way is really a talent. He always acts so comfortable around her too, just naturally holding her hand during the helicopter ride, patting her on the shoulder while they're talking, or reaching out for her whenever he sees her. No wonder the man is called a walking green flag. Now, let's talk about the walking red flag. I've always thought that contestants who are added into the show late are just there to stir things up, but Jin Young did way more than that. He completely changed the game. I almost felt like I was watching a season of The Bachelor where all the girls were just fighting for his attention. Wait, maybe they should do a spin-off with just Jin Young? Netflix, if you're listening. Anyway, first impressions. Good looking, but kind of an asshole, right? Especially the way he was on his date with Sul Ki and Soeun, it just seemed like he was trying to get the upper hand. 
But as time went by, you could see that he was just nervous about being on the show. And apart from that, he's just ridiculously honest. It's almost kind of funny to see the way he calls out Zhang Wu constantly. In terms of having chemistry with someone, I think Jin Young is a pro. He knows how to play the push and pull game, and he makes sure that the other party never loses interest in him. And to be fair, I think when you're on a dating show, you should be open to getting to know everyone, instead of stubbornly sticking to one person like Young Jae did. In that way, Jin Young did a great job. The only thing is, it was just so obvious that he liked Sul Ki from the beginning. So on one hand, he's being an ideal contestant, but on the other hand, it seems like he's just talking to other girls to make Sul Ki jealous. He always rushes out to see Sul Ki when the contestants get a chance to talk to each other on the island, but when he's actually with her, he doesn't make his feelings clear but just keeps her guessing. At some point, it crosses the line from being keeping the other person interested to just being manipulative, almost. Still, he gets some brownie points for being so nice to nod in and rejecting Minsu in such a mature way. In the real world, I think Sulki would have still gone for Jin Young cuz, like I said, the chemistry is undeniable. But I'm kind of impressed that, at least on national television, she chose Zhang Wu. She knows how much she's worth in Jin Young, even though he likes her, never seemed to acknowledge that. And you know what, Zhang Wu is a nice guy, so. Yay! For him getting a happy ending. Soeun and Young Jae, at this point, I really do not care about them. I know a lot of people like them together and hope they'll date, but I disagree. Despite his age, I feel like Young Jae is just a boy compared to the woman that Soeun is. But hey, if she's really into him, then good for them. After the whole drama with Young Jae, I thought I wouldn't care about what happens to Soe at all, but I'm actually really glad that she ended up with Sejun. They have sweet conversations, and they both seem like genuine people. I don't know if they would date, but it would be so cute if they remained in touch with each other. What did you guys think about the final couples? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Bibimbop.